Eagle by Jayco. I would not recommend buying a Jayco. I would not recommend that at all. But what we're doing now is we're getting all our scaffold pulled in. We got to get another one going across, handrails. And then we're going to make sure we get it all protected like we do over here on this other one, how all that's protected. So we want to make sure everything is protected prior to that. So we've got uh, even like this one here with the door open. We've got, you know, cloth up there. You'll see all that. So we'll, we'll come up here. This is the cool stairs we got. Easy, easy. Man, they're working hard up here. Hey, quiet on the set. I'm trying to do a video. All right, there's our Jayco. So one of the reasons why I really don't like Jayco, I have a Jayco sitting out here in the lot. It's a 2019. Yes, brand, brand, brand new. Still under warranty, in fact. Bad roof. Jayco will barely pay half to have it done. They refuse to pay to have the roof put on properly. So that's why I would not recommend a Jayco. We did one for Grand Design. They had some trouble with theirs. Customer command, Grand Design, they stepped up to the plate. But Jayco said, oh, heck no. And they are telling them they need to go to their service center. And their service center is going to throw on the same crappy roof as quick as they can because they're not making any money with it now. You see? So why would they want to do a good job? They just want to be able to let her get you know her one year warranty out of it which she may skate just by with it on that one that i'm telling you about the 2019. so <clears throat> this is uh your typical rv roof this die core stuff usually where it all fails so they want you to keep putting more on more on more on and i joke and i say hey the only one putting more on is a moron i mean there's something wrong with that system it just doesn't work so you shouldn't have to keep layering caulking on top of caulking. Not if it's designed to be outside. So it, I don't like about Dicor either. Is Dicor exploits people's ignorance to roof systems. You know, they, they made this caulking here designed to be outside. But if it's designed to be outside, why does it only last three to four months? I've been doing commercial work for 35 years. This is the first time I've ever heard of caulking designed to be outside that only lasts three to four months. That's nonsense. You would think that they would say, hey, let's bring this back and have it reformulated. So it will last outside. Nah, it's their cash cow. 12 bucks a tube. It's their cash cow. Common problems right in here. Usually a lot, you'll have a lot of water come down into this corner here and then it'll run down the wall. We've done a couple of wildcats like that where we've had to rebuild the wall. So, and just kind of giving you an overview of what we got going on. But it's your typical RV roof. I don't see anything outside the you know the the uh, the difference of any other roof so we got a hole in the roof right here then if you have an antenna like this water will come down this wire and it'll get in there and then it goes right into your coach right there so make sure you load this load up in here and put it down there and then on here see those bell caps I don't like the way they get those flashing detail caps on there um, th that one there has the three legs on it anyways like this one up here and water can get around these legs Let's see if i can reach it over here to show you but tip see how someone mooked all that in there that's because water can when it comes up it'll get around and then there's a screw there and it's hard to seal all that area so somebody really just mounted it on there when we do it we're gonna have a boot and then we have the boot on there we put a little what i call a bell cap on there just a little cap and it's spring loaded and it'll snap into the pipe so it just doesn't blow off and it's got these little prongs on there but if it did get popped up by a tree branch like that one down there then um, it all the water would just go into the holding tank where on the other one over here I'll show you if you get water right in there that's going to go to the roof deck and rot it out. So that's that's how that is. See it see right there? Water can get right down through there. The uh, This all needs to be sealed. If you have a coach and you see that right there, see it? I'm just, I'm just rubbing my finger across it. That needs to be resealed. That looks like silicone. It's not going to stick to the roof system. It's not going to stick. It needs to have a primer on it. So we're going to get a pad up on this as well around here. 
and then we'll be changing this insert trim. We'll be doing all that. Uh, looks like right here. I don't think you can see that. Wish I had something to to show you that because it looks to me like the siding is too high. Maybe there's a plate under there. Let's see what's going on under there. Well, I got you here. Take a couple tools out of my pocket. Put them right-handed. So let's see. There it is. So they got this protective plate on there, but it, it kind of burps up a little bit. It's not sitting, it's not sitting flat. You can see it's got a gap under there. So we'll see. We, we won't have that in on there anyways. We're going to put a protective piece over it. So we'd take the roofing, the remnants of the roofing. We take that and we'll fold it over the edge, and then we put the main roof over it. So it'll protect it all. We'll get all that. Change this insert trim. I don't like this insert trim because water can get down right in there and it'll travel. This is just a snap in. The stuff we use snaps in and over. You see this one just snaps right in. It's in better shape than uh, some of the other ones we've seen. But it's still gonna allow water as it comes around. Even if it's just moisture droplets it'll get down in there. And a lot of times when I pull these out <coughs> you'll see um, some debris up inside there. Let's see if this is the case here. And I'm trying to see what I'm doing and watch the camera. But you can see all that in there. If that was really sealed tightly, then you wouldn't even see any of that in there. See? So, but water can get down in that crack right there. That's what I don't like about it. So the stuff that we use is going to snap in the track and over the track, and then you can't get any water in it. Let's see. Anything else i got to show you? i got to show you. got to show you. Uh, nothing I can see. So we'll be putting our curbs up on here and we're going to tear it open and see what we got here. Back with more on RV roof install. Okay, so if you come in and if you expect to do your, your roof with us, those crank up antennas, just replace them. Because I can't build a curb for those. There's a shaft that goes down through the ceiling and then the handle only bites onto that shaft about 3 eighths of an inch. If I go to build a curb for it to get it up off the roof line like you should, then the shaft is inside this like attic cavity, if you will, and you never get that handle back on. So they do make a couple other ones, like Z1 is uh, by Weingard, and that one has an extendable handle that you can do. Even though it rotates, it rotates 360, it's still stationary to the point where it's not going to crank up like this way. Because these, obviously, they crank up and they turn. This other one, it just rotates back and forth. Uh, the Z1 does, or you can get a wine guard um, automatic, which is a, a razor. Those are pretty good too. Those are automatic. I actually prefer those, but but I like to, I, when I say I prefer them, I prefer to install those. Um, they're a better antenna, but uh, I wouldn't know because I don't own an RV, so I don't know who's better. So do some research if you decide to do that. All right, let's get to work. Uh, trying to get this roof. Yabba dabba do. Whoa. What is it? Oh man, right in the knee. <laughs> yeah. A bad knee? That's the, uh, that's what that is. It's the uh, billowing device with the awning that sticks out. Whack my knee on that. <laughs> man, the, put a cushion on that one. <laughs> this thing is in, yeah. It's not soaked, but it is damp right in there for sure. And then, uh, and this has been over in our other bay for at least a couple of months, at least that, in our other building. So, got some screws all on an angle and everything. It just compromises things. You can see, like right there, see how the the decking on this side is a little higher than over here. That's why we put the buffer strips down because we want a nice smooth transition. We don't want to have that ripple in there. Not to look nice and clean and work like it should. So we'll end up taking this off. You can see how rusty these screws are. Look at them all. Getting some water in there, right behind there. There's that silicone right here that's failed, right on the edge that I was talking about earlier. Right there. See? 
You just peel it right up. Bing. Yeah, but they're all it's all rusted. Huh. This is this is wet right here. This portion is wet. I bet we pop this thing. I wouldn't be surprised if we open this up. Look at the moat they put around here. This is a die core. Put more on, more on. That's craziness right there, I'll tell you. They they just exploit people's ignorance and knowledge. It's that's a shame. That really is. It is a shame. Don't buy die core. Don't no, actually don't even buy a Jayco. Because if you bought a brand new Jayco, like I was telling you earlier, and you had problems with it, they're not gonna pay to have it done right. They don't care. Nope. And we got one sitting out there. Let's see. Well, these are all. This ones aren't rusted as much as the ones down on that other end. Uh, I was able to remember that billowing device, so I didn't get knocked in the knee with it. It's just glue right there. That's what that is. Let me go around the other side and give you an overview. That's just glue. A lot of discoloration just from the glue. We'll probably end up redecking this because you got. We'll probably end up putting another skin on it. As long as it's down tight, that's what we care. Okay. There's some more of that caulking that can loose. Right here, right here, hey. That's, and it'll get down inside there. So, we suspect they already had some repairs done, or somewhere there's been some repairs done. Uh, mainly because a lot of these screws, they're the square. When we pulled these ones out down here, there were Phillips drywall screws like these. Those aren't the right screws that they use. So somebody was probably fixing or trying to fix this. We don't know what we're going to encounter when we open this backside up. We never do. So sometimes that throws our calendar off. We'll get opening something up and then come to find out it's a big old mess and we got to fix it before we can send it out. And, you know, we don't know until we get to it. Okay, look at all this black mold in here. That's some... That is some stuff right there. Got some warm and fuzzies right there. So we're gonna soak it down with mold kill. Got some more damage up here. Uh, we're gonna see what's going on. Well, we've got some moisture in here. This band. <laughs> Is all raw Ted, raw Ted, two T's, maybe three on the raw to Ted. Here. So now what we're looking at is like we got a lot of a lot of freeness here. Don't like it. We're gonna go see what's going on down there, and um, check out the ceiling after we get some of this insulation rolled back. It looks like it's it's just a little bit of a dip in there. So we may be able to strengthen that up. You know, obviously fix this this uh, end truss here. Probably oh, this one don't look bad. So that's what we're doing. But one of the few, one of the few, one of the few uh, RVs and campers we got in. This is screwed down. All the deck is. It's all screwed down. So you know, it's uh, pretty good. There's no glue on it. So this must have been in the transition. Where they went, hey, you know what? Now we're not going to put any glue because that's just too much work. Don't put the glue. We'll still use the screws. And like, there's a lot of screws in here too. I was actually surprised. Most of the time they put a screw here, they put a screw down that end, one in the middle, and then they split these. But these have got quite a few screws in it. So I'll bet when that CFO saw all these screws going in here, I'll bet he sharpened that pencil up and said, oh no, we don't do that. All you need is five. And you don't even have to do every truss. That's how they do them now. They're just getting worse. The older ones are built better. Decking has been removed. So now what we do is go around and look for stuff wrong. You can see all this discoloration. That's because there was a plumbing leak right there. And up there by the AC, actually right there. That gasket was leaking. It caused that. Then see all these screws? That was the previous screw holes here. Got it was split. That's why you don't like to use them. You don't want to put screws in here. Seems like a smart idea. Hey, let's get it down tight. But all it ends up doing, typically, is splitting it. Then you don't have any strength to it. So, see all those over there. 
not every one is like that, but mostly where there's screws been put in. The ones that were put in here look like they have splits in them. This one right here. So we're going to staple it all together. Then the areas where you actually would want to put a screw and make it strong, like around this vent box, all they do, <laughs> this is clever, they take made the box frame, they made the box frame, and then what they did is put a, this little quarter crown staple and they staggered it over, this 7 16 crown there that they staggered over, and that's it. So they just kind of got it to go in here and here at the same time. There's so. The decking, when you put it on, would add some strength to it, but still, it's, you think, hey, why don't you put screws in that? Nope. So, and then we're, uh, we just soaked this down with mole kill, because this is pretty bad. And actually, it's, uh, they killed already a lot of the mold in there, because there was a lot of fuzz balls on there for sure. So it's, and you still see some little down that way. So we're going to keep soaking it down. The window is the only thing holding it. I'll bet if we take that window out, this whole thing will fall off, which is about what we're going to get ready to do. We'll have to pull the coach forward so we get back here and work. So, all right, that's where we're at. Just as I shut the camera off, I realized there was something else I wanted to show you. See these here? Here you can see. Yeah, that's been rubbing up against that metal piece. That's called a ferrule. The metal piece is a ferrule. So you do not put a fastener of any sort, staple, screw, into the wire. That's smart. But gee whiz, that thing needs to be protected because now it's damaging the, the uh, conduit. So this one doesn't look like there's any in these two. But this one is. And then, if I get down here a little bit, here's another one. You can see it's just been rubbing in there a little bit. The fix is... A penny, like almost literally. Look how this one's doing. This one seems a little more snug. I don't know if I can see in there. You may be able to see it before I do. I'm trying to look through the camera lens here, the screen. So. But all that needs to be protected. It just doesn't make sense. It's like they will not put. I'm surprised you put this many screws in it, honestly. But they couldn't put those little protectors in there. I'll show you where they are when I find them. I'm going to go look for them in the stuck room there. And then we'll put them in. But they're just little plastic inserts. It's actually an electrical code. And we've got the same issue over there. We've got a lot of rot over there. I already showed you all that. So we'll uh, probably need to buy some ins insulation. So we wanted to, that's why I wanted to rip it up. I want to see what's going on with it. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to pull all this insulation up. And I want to check these trunk lines. I want to make sure that they're not broke or come apart. And now's the time to do it. We already got it here, so we'll tape it all back together. It's just styrofoam trunk lines anyways, but still I want to tape together if they're breached. So we roll the insulation back, see? It's all, all free. We're going to tape all that back together. We'll check it all down there. No sense in not doing it. It's already here. Let's get it done. Let's get it done right. This is some of the stuff you're not going to get in another service center. They don't care. But I do all these coaches. I do them like they're mine. What would I do if this was mine? That's the next question I have. Like, Then I will call the customer and I'll say, this is what I come up with. This is what I see. Uh, this is what I would do. Just obviously keep them in the loop. This is, I know it's not my wallet, but at the same point, I don't want them to go, hey, gee whiz, I got a broken trunk line, and now they got to tear out a seal on a roof system get at it to fix it, because that's the only way you're going to get at it, right? So I want to do all that, let them know, and uh, get it done right. Oh man, they didn't even finish it. It's, it's not even mounted to this under here. Is it not it's, going through the duct on there? It's, no, it's just blowing freely into the cylinder. Oh, in there? It's, okay. it's supposed to be mounted to it, though, if you get close up under here, you can see it right here. Uh, there's a hole for it, but it's not Oh, there's a hole for it. it. Yeah, but they just didn't seal. We'll probably throw some tape or something around there. Yeah. We'll do that. Then uh, I think there's, there, is there just the one or is there another no, one on the another other one. side? We'll check the other side. We'll get that one trunk line on the passenger side. Oh, yeah. and then when you come around, there's just the one AC that was right there. You got this other trunk line right here. Okay. Well, that's a pretty good size gap. 
Oh, there. We cooling down the whole attic area. It's stay nice and cool there. All right. So, like I said, we'll check. Is that the rest of it? Did you check it all? How's this one? We'll check that one over there. We'll check that outlet. We'll check that outlet and see what it does too. But and then some of this insulation is bad. We're gonna get rid of it. We'll throw it away. Obviously, mold we'll kill. Wait for all that to dry, and then we'll do our repairs. And you see how rotted stuff is. This is what we run into. This is what kind of holds our our um, calendar up a little bit. You know, we don't ever just get into very, very, very rarely do we get into a situation where we could just take roofing material off clean up a deck a little bit you know and then put a the new roofing membrane down and get our curves and everything and go is very very few that we ever do like that you know usually we come into where we have problems like what you see here like what you see here all of this you know um, quiet on the set low potty mouth all right so we got the back piece off as you can see this is just underbelly so supposedly someone had fixed the piece before and uh, if they put this on, which is my guess, if they did, it's not stuck to anything. You can't glue it to anything. There's nothing that's going to stick to this. It's like plastic. So nothing's going to stick to it. But everything looks pretty daggum good. I mean, it looks real good. I'm actually surprised. So that's a plus. So it looks like all we have to do is uh, fillet that piece of fiberglass, laminate a new piece on, we'll fasten a new piece on here. We'll probably go around maybe fix some of this possibly. But even that isn't bad. Normally I glue them in, but if there's no reason, like that's solid. So I think they're just putting that in for added insulation. So, um, you know, we'll see when we open it up. We may make a couple of adjustments, but it looks like we don't really have to reframe the whole thing. We just have to fix that, that back piece uh, on there and fix the skin behind. It's just an eighth inch piece of Luon that goes on the back. And then you we, uh, glue the phylon to that. And then it's all bonded together, you know. But we will fasten and glue the the uh, sheathing to this. And now it's it's stuck to there instead of just trying to glue it. I've had other ones where I've taken apart. And they'll have the phylon and the, um, the Luon glued already. And then what they do is you just hang it there. And they try to glue it to these. It doesn't usually work out that well. So we put, put the uh, Luon on, glue it, fasten it, and then laminate the piece on it. You just do it a little differently. Uh, it seems to me like you get better results that way. But, you know, I'm looking down, even down in here, I thought this may have been trash. But as I look down there, I don't think you can see it. That's all nice and fresh and clean. There's no water stains, nothing. So this really saved, saved the, the back end here, that's for sure. So, considering all the leaks that they, they have showing up there and how bad the roof deck looked. Got some rusty nail uh, staples and stuff like that, but overall, I mean, it, it looks well. It looks well. Like I said, we may just may just strengthen up a little bit. Maybe add a, a couple of fasteners or something. But when we get it all apart. I'll, I'll assess it then and figure out what we need to do. Totally. But this is actually good news. Good news. That's what we got. And we got most of it off already. So we're sending her down. We're gonna clean a little better. Get new skin on there. That's what we got here. But overall, everything looks fairly decent. Come on, yes. Even that looks good. Everything looks well. Everything looks well. That is good news. Right, so now what we did is uh, took off the underbelly. We're taking all that insulation out. We want to make sure everything is okay. And we're going to soak this down again with some uh, mold kill. That's what we're going to do. We're going to soak it down again. So we took it all out. The insulation they had was only one inch down there. They had it behind there. It was just a foam, a pink foam. But uh, again, we want to make sure everything is right before we put it back together. So we'll soak it down. We're probably going to fill it back. Obviously, we'll fill it back in with insulation. And then we'll... Um, this is Concrobium. That is the best mold kill that I have come across as of yet. If anybody knows anything better... You just let me know in the comments. Well, we were trying to salvage this. And here goes my tape measure. And you can see we got a hole there. We were trying, that's obviously the ceiling. So we're going to have to replace this one panel. Oh well, it is what it is. We got a, we were going to think we could do something on the inside to make it look clean, but it just won't. So we'll just, I've got one hanging around, we'll put one in.
Uh, we have got the ceiling panel out. Now, what we notice is this top plate right here. This is the top plate of the wall. This is the top plate of the wall. But that is rotted. So what we lucked out with in the back, we got work to do in the front. But all down there, I don't know if you can see that. I'll try and zoom up a little bit. But all that's rotted in there. That, you see this piece here, rotted, rotted. Put all this down in here. You can see all that's a mess. Yeah, maybe that's a better angle. I'm trying to show you the best I can, but oh, even over here, then in this corner, you see this corner is all rotted. This whole area is right there. So now we're going to have to take this corner mold is off here, but it's not off on the bottom, I don't think. We're going to take that out, take the lights out, take the window out. And then we'll have to try to peel this siding away, see if we can butterfly this thing open. And then, uh, because even while we're working, the chips are going to fall down inside. See if you can get an idea where I'm looking here. I'll back up. So the chips are going to fall down inside there. And then we'll have lumps in there. So we have to at least open this up enough to do all that to keep it clear. So it looks like it's coming back, you know, good. This is four foot or so. Something like that, three and a half, four feet. So we can see what's going on. And then uh, I noticed I got some here too. And I'm trying to salvage this ceiling panel because I don't have one more. That's it. That's all I've got. So we're going to try and salvage that right there because the paper is not ripped. So I'm going to glue all that back together once it dries out and everything. It looks a little damp. So we're going to get that clean. And then a piece of molding will cover that. That's what they had in there anyways. But that's the plan. All right, onward and upward. Here we go. This is what we got. Somebody been monkeying with this for sure. Get all that rod up there. Then down here, we've got some rock right in there. Look at that board there just falling out. It is out. Oh, it is out. Here you go. That probably what that rattling noise was they kept hearing. They thought it was a squirrel or something. It's a loose frame board. Don't worry about it. The front end will fall off. <laughs> All right, well that's what we're doing. We're gonna peel her back and make some repairs. <laughs> Got this one right here all compromised too. So we're gonna do some fixing. That's what we do here. Whoa, hey, careful, careful. Sorry, that area. Wow, we did not anticipate this. It is all the way back to that slide out. All the way back there. We've got a big chunk of this off of here. I don't know if you can see how much we got off. We got to fillet this. Wow. Once we broke this free right in here, the rest of it just come right off. Wow, we got a little bit of work ahead of us. This is the center truss to the ceiling that we're taking out. What we did is cut new trusses in, just cut off the top side, and then what we do you come over here once you glue and screw this in some big screws and you get it all glued in then we put gussets on the side that just helps some strength to it that's all to pull it all together see all we do is just cut it was upside down but we just cut that part off because it was all cracked and rotted and we use this part that's still the good part of the truss where you're going to get your strength and you cut this make up this piece here that's all kind of notched out and everything so then we'll have our strength, we glued it all together to give it one piece. And then, like I said, glue this other one on the other side, and we're going to put another one. So we have them on both sides. You'll see this one over here, and this one over here. So that's what I'm doing, is just filling them in. Then we can flip this over, and that's going to make your... This is a ceiling panel right here. This piece is. So it fits right there. There's an opening for the vent. So everything else is good. Those are for the speakers. We'll just flip it over, drop it down. We're obviously we're going to replace this panel. But... Um, that's that's where we're at right now. This is our piece that we took off. We had to make a relief cut on it. We're gonna bury it up in the back over there. That's all we can do. Look at that mess. Got some good rot right there. What we're doing right now, we pulled all the insulation out. What we're doing is spraying some mold kill just as a precaution. 
The inside panel looks pretty good, but I want to make sure there's nothing in it. So we want to soak all that down. But all this is it's all rotted. Even like this piece here, when we were looking at it, where'd that little piece go? Here it is. So this little piece was in here. Like this. So yeah, it looked pretty good. But then I put my finger back there. I noticed it was all rotted and you can see it fell out, so I gotta replace this. These are rotted here. Uh, you got all that rust and everything, those staples. So more than likely all of this is coming out. Some of it's water stained. And if it's like that, seems solid. So we may be able to save it. And you go, hey, maybe we can. But then when you look up there, uh, maybe not. And you can see that header up there is rotted as well. That stack. You can see the way they stack that there. And it's actually rotted over to, that's a slide out header. It goes way too far. You don't need it. You don't need it that far. We're going to chop it back and we're going to just get all that mess out of there. But that's what we're doing now. It's coming down and winding down the end of the day anyways. But gee whiz, what a lot of work this is. This is really a lot of work. So this is what we got. Even so right there. Well, that gives you a good view of what we get into. So we'll get it all back together and fix it. But we know somebody was in here working on one of these uh, for a couple of reasons. One, you can see that panel is not the same as that panel. So somebody already replaced this panel and some of this has come down from the top up there and you know you can just see that it was it just wasn't done right. It wasn't done right at all. But that piece is still good. The brown that is. Hey, that one's not. That's the original. This was that they worked and replaced. And I'm not sure about this. I'm almost thinking they did the same over here because it's so dark. You know? And it doesn't match anything. This one. You can see the difference in it. So they may have done this because when I mentioned it to the owner, he had made a comment like, you know, he was so fed up because I think he did have some work done on this. And he was surprised that there was this much damage when I sent him pictures. Okay, more to come. Look at that pink foam right there that's not factory no, that's and neither right is there. that right there There's that's not factory yeah up there. so that's how we know it's a monkey that before, don't we? yeah that's some that's a mess anyhow we'll get it all back together that's what we do here the only bad part is it just throws my calendar off so if you're watching this and you're up on deck and you know what we run into you know it throws us off we can't just put a roof on this thing and put a uh, redeck it. We still got to fix the sailing too. We get the sailing out. I don't know if you can see that, but that right there is my shop roof. <laughs> right there. See? And that's the interior smoke detector. We had to take that sailing panel out because it was all rotted and the trusses were rotted. So we got that over on the other side. We're going to redo those. We got this header section out right there. And then uh, we sprayed all this down with that mold kill. But it is still that bad. So executive decision, it's coming out. If it was my coach, I would not want that in there. Now, I tried cleaning it up, and it, does, it still doesn't want to clean up a little bit. If I could scratch some of it off, I'd like that one little spot there, but the rest of it is so bad. Shower's right there. So we're gonna just take it all out. So all we can do is that bad. Like I said, I would not want this in there. Obviously, all of this is gonna to go too, and we're gonna to rebuild all that, but we had no choice. So, it is what it is. All right, well we got our framing done on this. Standing up on this walk board. We got all new framing here. See if this thing can focus in. Got all new studs in here. Everything's all fresh all the way down there. Reframed all this. And all over here, all new framing. This is just an open bay. If I peel that out, you're not gonna see anything except for the back wall. So we got all that. Let's see. I can show you some more. We also replaced the interior ceiling panel is in, all glued. New band joist. There's a new wall plate right here. Goes all the way over. And uh, we got the bathroom we're having trouble with. 
We put a new ceiling piece in the bathroom as well. That's a new piece that's in there. So we got that. And then uh, I think we had to add a little one in the closet, a little piece. But uh, that's it so far. She's good. Everything is glued and screwed. Everything is. So that's us so far. And then we also had to replace a piece down there as the bunk comes around right there. So let's see if I get down off this ladder and give you a view of that. All this around here, all new framing. Framing down here on this stud. Right there. There's also a double around here to the back. Let's see all that in there. Everything is all framed out the way it should be. This is the piece around the bunk that we did. That's screwed into the frame, the actual metal frame. That's what that is. And then this other piece, uh, this one here, I stitched this metal in here because it was just a little crumb. It wasn't rotted or anything. I just wanted to make sure that we had some good strength in it. But I mean, it was so minute, it would really add to the wallet quite a bit to tear out something like that. It, it was just a prudent measure. That's all it was. We put a composite up underneath here so we can screw everything back. If you put a thin piece of wood like that in there, you're just going to split it anyways. So the composite is just like a plastic. It's not going to split like that. So these were still good. There was nothing wrong with these. So we had leashed onto them on the, on the top portion over there. A couple of them we did. Like this one, there's a plate right here. This is this beam going across. And then these come up to this right here, to this joist. So, but you can see we reframed all here. We had to reframe all around the door, all around there. Then over here, there was a couple of sections that weren't totally rotted. So what we did when we, this one will run back up. Let me show you what we did here. We had to get all the wiring redone. So this one, when it goes up, we spliced another one, then we put another one beside it, is what we did. We just cut off where the rot was, put a stick on top of it. And then we put another one beside it to carry it all. It's all glued and screwed together. And the same with this here. We had to replace that piece in there. And all the way up. So this is the stuff I just showed you. And then we cut the siding like that on purpose. It's got that shape. Because once we put this back together, we're going to put a decal on there. So it's not obvious that we did some work to it. So that's about it. That's what we got so far. So... We still haven't, uh, the back wall wasn't rotted, but we still have to clean it up. So what we're doing right now over here is we're cleaning up the siding that goes to this. That's the fiberglass that's going to go on here. So we're just trying to clean that up so we can, we're going to put Luan on here like it should be. Get this back here stapled and everything all fastened in and then we'll end up, um, once we get that all together and get the Luan all put back in place, then we can glue the siding back on. So that's where we're trekking so far. So it's coming out pretty good. Slow process, but it's coming along. Right, now you can see our good framing. So what we had to do anyways, the way the uh, insulation was wrapped on the studs, we wouldn't be able to get anything to glue to that. So I had them cut it and re-staple it back inside the base like this. But then now we can get something to glue to that frame. But you can see how we framed out all this, all new. That's what we wanted to show you yesterday. I didn't get a good chance to do it. So now we're getting the sheathing on the wall, getting it glued, fastened, and getting it lined up. And then we're going to get the fiberglass put back on there. We have got this phylon all cleaned up. It's ready to go back on. And we already got all the decking on here. We put all new sheathing behind there. It's already been glued and fastened on there. So now what we're doing is getting the decking on there. So. We'll go up and show you that. And that's getting glued and fastened down as well. That's what they're working on up there. This has been quite the project. We still got to get the back wall screwed away as well. This is our new decking going down. So everything's been glued and refastened. That's what they're working on now, filling in some insulation. And uh, then we'll keep continuing on. That's where we're at. So we're looking at this framing right here. And that was one screw they had holding the ladder into the actual 
framing. One screw. Same down here, one screw. There was one screw there. There was one right here, I think it is. Maybe it's those ones over there. It's 38 and a half up. We measured it off, so it must be. But anyhow, they didn't have enough on there, so we're going to put another stick of framing in here. Right there. So we have some stock. We're going to screw, glue and screw it in that way. We'll put another one down here. And then we got one more up there, and we'll do the same on the opposite side. we got to get some strength in there, so... You know, you're climbing the ladder, you don't, it shouldn't be screwed to eighth inch plywood, eighth inch glue on with uh, the, just the phylon on the back. That's not right. So we're going to get that strength. All right. right. So we are getting ready to hang this piece. This must have been another piece that someone had put on or painted because there's no decals at all on this back side. Then what we noticed is that there's a little bit of a color difference. <coughs> and also somebody had cut this right here. I'm guessing it was the same piece because you look at these holes. You go up there. You can see how it looks like it's been cut a little bit. We should be able to get all that back together. We're going to glue it on. Okay, so what we got now, we already glued this one side. Now we're just rolling it out. So we got this big, heavy roller. That's a commercial roller. They'll pack her down. We still got this other side, we'll put the glue on it. And we have um, all those strips and everything on there. Got the strips in there, I'll show you when we flip it. All right, so we've got it glued, and now we are going to roll the roofing. You can see all the protective strips that we got over there. Hey, I'm doing a video. Yeah, what are you with you? I'm holding the camera. That's usually a sure sign right there. Gee whiz. So now we just roll that over there, and then we're going to take Big Bertha here, we're going to pack her down, and that'll be that. Then we put on our curbs, and she's ready for the prom. This thing is finally coming together, full load of work. We got the front already done over there, the, the front driver's corner. We got the fiberglass already laminated back on there. So. Okay, so we got all our curbs down, they're all welded. And now what we're doing over here is we're stapling the roofing to the edge and then we're going to put on our gutter rail on here. That's what it is. That's what you're doing over there, welding that right in there. So we're coming along. We are done. Here I've got logo RV-RI.com. We got the month, the year we installed the roof, so we can keep tabs on it when it comes in for inspections. So what we got is a 60 mil commercial grade Carlisle roof system. That's what this is. It's a TPO, which is a thermoplastic. All of the curbs are all heat welded in there. All of it is, not just the edge, but the whole width of that flange is heat welded back to the main roof. And it's also got a counter flash on there as well. I'll explain that as I move down the roof here. We got the same on a refrigerator. And this is what stops the leaks. This is a commercial roof. This is exactly how a commercial roof functions. If you want to Google commercial roof images, you will see everything is up on a curb or in a boot. That's the way they function. So these boots that we have here, again, these are all heat welded. You don't have to go back and do anything. If this bell cap ever got tore off, or one of them did, it's just a spring loaded. It's in there pretty good. But if it did, that's loaded as well where the pipe comes up so any water that got down there would go right into the holding tank it's not going to get into the roof at all so we've got two strikes of caulking along the turn bar here we got new gutters on here we also went around the awning on the top here we've got the uh, air conditioner again it's up on a curb and we also have the uh, counter flash right here and what that's for the way the I'll, I'll go around the other way and i'll describe it a little bit to you uh, it'd be easier to show you on that side but uh so we got the two strikes here, we got this insert trim. Let's go around the other side and we shall show you what's going on. We shall show you. Hey, I'm doing a video. Ladder. We got those, they're screwed down inside there. What they have are these plates just like these right here. Those are on the end here. Put them down. Obviously, we got these boots here. Screw them down. That's a 
a special uh, sealer that we use and you won't have any issues with it so that's done and like I said all that's all heat welded they didn't want to put the antenna on so what we did was we just put the letter A on there just in case down the road someone wants to put an antenna up there they know where it's at we've got some stands on the back of the air conditioner and what that does just give it some balance so uh, same thing with this curb all heat welded everything's all heat welded heat welded heat welded okay so we've got a counter flash on here that's what this is all of the curbs have them all the curbs have the counter flash on here so as you this is the front of the coach you're driving down and you get caught in a heavy storm and that water is just a barreling across and it's a heavy storm it's going to come up it's going to hit here and it's going to get forced out one way or another it's not going to be able to jump over i mean obviously you're going to have rain coming down but this is going to minimize the erosion effect that you normally would get if you just had this seated right down to the roof like they typically do it on an rv that has the same counter flash all of them have it here's another one here they're all designed the same way getting back to the ac with this counter flash so we've got the one on the curb that we were just talking about however if you have water coming down this way on the cover underneath there's a foam gasket i don't want water getting in there so i put this one on here so when the water hits there it'll trickle down get underneath that counter flash and zip out on the underside you've got some corrugation the uh, pan or the frame of the ac it's not flat so that water isn't going to try to it won't be able to really travel back there the foam gasket we put in there we do seal it but i do not recommend anybody to seal it you have to use a special type because you could actually uh, have an adverse effect and eat the foam so these are not diy videos these are uh, not tutorials uh, we'd just like to show the customer all the work we've done for them so if you remember this whole wall was just a mess all the way back down to here so the best we could do right now is just put this piece of uh, vinyl on here for now and they may want to put a decal or something else on it wash it down but um, that's about as best we can get it unless it goes to a body shop to get painted but we got all of this whole wall all back together I'm actually really surprised at how nice the transition came because you'd never know that we were in there doing any work except for this right here and that's the way we like to see it so they uh, we did the same thing here went across put some caulking on here but I recommend the whole coach be sealed uh, definitely we need to have that done so what I'll do now is uh, we'll get down and uh, show you the inside and how much work we did on the inside and how well that come back just as I was about to head on down I remember I got my samples here so this is the roof system this is a TPO roof membrane that's what this roof is right on here and this GAS brand you can see all those little squares in there that's the mesh that's where it gets its strength you can see some of it right there on the edge that's where it gets its strength to resist hail, tree branches, and things like that. So it would be hard to get a real tear in here. But if you did, we can go over it with that same flashing that we used for the curbs, or even like the boots, and we can uh, seal that up and it won't affect the warranty at all. We, it's not a problem. But you don't have to tear the whole roof off because you got a tree branch on it, much like you do with an RV roof, because they're just, you can't weld to them and they, they just only repair you could do to those is possibly some tape and that's just not a long-term fix but um, so that explains the roof system again this is a Carlisle brand but uh, GAF makes some we use GAF as well um, this is our insert trim so the insert trim right here that we got that is white this is the same and black you can't get it in black we had a special order it but it's a good uh, um, demonstration to show you so let me show you what normally you get on a coach which is going to be how this insert trim is right here and all it does you can see right there it's just flat and it sits inside that track and snaps in the thing I don't like about it and this particular rail is an awning rail but when you have it like this on the coach water can still get down in there in the bottom side and travel up underneath there so I don't like that so we got this and you can see the edge of this has a groove and that groove not only does it get in the track it gets over the track we sealed everything so that's what I like about it uh, we don't sell any of these products we don't sell the curves we don't sell the boots we don't sell anything we're a service center and then uh, like I said I know you can't get this in black there's another company that makes it AP products makes one I believe in black but it's not the same what I like about this one and that's why we've got it is because it has a little bubble to it which basically it, it keeps it tighter 
and also the water would be more prone to kind of roll that way and I, and I like it so uh, the other one that um, one of my uh, subscribers had sent us it's flat it's not like that and um, I like that because I, I, I know it's going to stay tight you know it's going to stay tight in there so but um, let's go down we know we got a light on over there so we're going to get down and take a look hopefully I get some yeah, I'll get some lighting in there if I don't have it. We'll show you what's going on. Okay, inside. this is the bunk that we had worked on. This is the bathroom right here. This door opens at you. But uh, this is everything we rebuilt on the outside. We've got a couple of wrinkles there. Probably could be ironed out. But we replaced this ceiling panel up here. This particular one is what we replaced. And then we had to put this cover in here because there's an electrical wire we had to cut. And I do not like just leaving electrical. Uh, you, that is the 120 line. I don't like leaving those just kind of spliced together up in a cavity where you can't get at them. So we put that in there. Then put some new insert trim right here. We got all that in there. And then we had to do some work on the bathroom wall. We replaced that whole bathroom wall on this side. And we also did the ceiling as well. And we sealed it out, put some trim around all of that, and sealed it all up. So that's a vinyl as well. We put a vinyl skin on that so it'll keep the moisture out and then sealed everything. So the other one is more of a paper. So that's that's how we got all that squared away. And then what we did is way at the top over in that corner of the slide out, we made sure that corner was tight. And we also did the same to this corner over here and checked this forward corner and that one. Just to make sure that we didn't have any leaks. So uh, out we go. And i to turn around here so I don't fall out of the coach. Da, da, da. So we'll stretch this scaffold apart. I don't know if you can see this, how well it come out. But like I said, I was, I was really impressed with the way this whole siding come out. It looks really good, even where it had joined back together. Everything come out really well. So... All right, well, that's our big beast of a Jayco Eagle. We appreciate you watching. Uh, you got our website, it's rvroofinstall.com. If you have any questions, you give us a call. You can leave a comment below. I usually do pretty good to uh, get back to you as quick as I can. So um, we appreciate you watching. Thanks.